Good morning and welcome to this tutorial on Sumi-e, the Japanese art of ink painting. So some things you're going to want to have around is a large piece of paper. The one you'll practice on probably won't be this big, but I'm going to show you a wide variety of things. So I wanted to have a little bit of a bigger space to do that in. Um, next, you'll need a bamboo brush with the natural hairs. I have a little cup of the Sumi e ink here. And what I would actually like to do is I like these cups because they have little bumps up on top of them. So when I'm not using my brush, it can rest on there without rolling off. If you can see that so that um, I don't want it laying on the table and getting ink all over the table or all over my paper. So that keeps it lifted up and lying flat so that it protects the bristles and my workspace. The next thing you'll also want to have is a cup of water. Now we have the water there for a couple of different reasons. The first one is that we're going to start with a wet brush. So I'm going to dip into the water, swipe, and notice how I'm turning my brush. That's because I want to get this nice point to my brush. And I want to make sure that my brush is soaked, but I don't want it dripping all over the paper. Now, how you hold a brush is going to be different from how you normally do. Normally, we hold it kind of like this and up towards the end. When you're holding the Sumi E brush, you're going to put two fingers on one side. You're going to bring the other two over to this side, and then you're going to add your thumb here with a nice light touch. You don't want to squeeze too hard. You don't want to be too soft so that you can't control the brush but you're gonna use your fingers to help give you a nice stable grip on the brush about halfway up the handle. That helps keep you from getting ink all over your hands. So when I'm using this, uh, pressure is very important. So when I'm ready to start making marks, I'm going to dip into the Sumi ink. And again, I'm going to address the tip, twist and turn to help start with a nice tip, okay? A nice point tip. If you press lightly with your brush, notice that how my elbow is up off the table. It really helps if you are sitting up straight, elbow up off the table, my wrist is straight, so I can make a nice straight line and a thin line with a light touch. The harder I press, the thicker my line will become. Now, you're ready to begin your exploration. And we're gonna talk about some of the different things and how we can do so much with just one brush. Now I've brought you in a little bit closer so that you can see a little bit better what we're doing. So when I make this stroke, my brush curves and so what I want you to do is to maybe explore on your large piece of paper how do I make short lines what happens with that tip as I press down and lift up and then each time I want you to think about how can I use this tip and just explore and experiment with the different types of line that you can get as you push down and lift up. Now, this is interesting. I've got a nice separated tip here. What can I do with that? I can get some nice lines like that. Also, notice how dark my lines started out and how they are getting lighter as I lose ink. That is one way to get grays. I could do some little rainbowy lines with this split tip. Give me something kind of like ridges or water waves. I can now see what can happen if I come this way. Ooh, I get a nice gradation right here. 
So as I continue, I can go back into the ink dip and reform my tip and add some more so I can experiment with how what happens as I create wide lines. I've got, I can even take my fingers, you may want to have a paper towel if you're going to do this, and I can purposefully spread that tip out a little bit very gently so that I can try some curves. I'm using my elbow for these curves. And also notice how when I'm doing this, I'm starting at the bottom and moving at the top. Another fun thing to try is making some very short. I needed to reform my tip for this because I know I want little lines. So I can make some little groupings like this. Those are great for little sticks. Okay, I can go lift. What happens when I add lots of different pressure? Look at how I can get some nice dynamic lines in here. And then what if I twist? Think how you could use that. And I can get more water in here. This is part of the reason why you have some water because I can add water. If I want to get a nice light gray, I can wash some of the ink out of my brush as well. Just a little gentle scrub and I can get some great, ooh, I like how that ink gathered at the bottom. And so I can get some different values within that to get some beautiful lines. So your exploration may look very different from mine because you're going to find different movements and that's okay. The point of this exercise is one, learn how to hold the brush. Remember it is two fingers here on the bottom, two fingers on the top, halfway up with a thumb there. Remember light pressure gives you light little lines using the side of the brush can give you thicker lines or pressing down. So you can see how many different types of lines you can get with just one brush. Happy exploring.